good morning uh, let us start our uh, class on uh, environmental biotechnology and biosafety uh, i think uh, uh, most of you uh, attended the biosafety training program that we organized uh, several weeks ago in collaboration with south asia biosafety uh, program and yes, uh, uh, today i shall discuss uh, academically uh, the biosafety as well as biosafety guideline how uh, biosafety concept was emerged and accepted by and the uh, different uh, countries and as well as the researchers and it is a very uh, critical for releasing any new technology uh, which contains a uh, new gene uh, or gene construct uh, there, uh, there is a regulatory you know framework not only in bangladesh in most of the countries and there uh, is a, a you know national committee local committee to uh, monitor all the things whether biosafety guidelines are followed for uh, releasing any new technology uh, gm technology or transgenic technology or not Here is the, uh, talk, uh, you know, uh, you know the course title. And first, let me uh, discuss on what is biosafety. Biosafety means the need to protect human and animal health and environment from the possible adverse effects of the products of modern biotechnology. Here. Uh, the meaning of modern biotechnology means uh, the product containing a, a, you know new gene or trans gene uh, or even uh, in some countries genetically uh, uh, you know uh, gene edited products are also included uh, in the uh, guideline of bi uh, has to follow the guideline of biosafety so biosafety is a critical uh, component in uh, the application of uh, biotechnology modern biotechnology uh, how biotech biosafety concept was evolved uh, it is a very important question uh, before uh, the introduction of modern biotechnology there was no concern of biosafety over the years uh, of you know uh, genetics and plant breeding plant breeding released lots of varieties and help us to uh, increase the food productivity through releasing uh, you know uh, stress tolerant variety or high yielding variety uh, but uh, these essentially old uh, technologies are not e uh, uh, efficient enough uh, to cope up with the new biotic and abiotic challenges due to the global climate change. And global population is increasing uh, dramatically uh, and it is estimated that by the year 2050, the global population would be 9.8 billion. So uh, land is decreasing uh, we have to increase the productivity as well as um, develop new varieties uh, or new technologies that are adapted to the changing climate. So international evolution of biosafety, if we want to discuss, we have to start, uh, you know, uh, from the environmentalism emerged as a distinct development in the last 40 years. Last 40 years, especially uh, when DT, DDT was banned uh, uh, by the activity of environmentalists because uh, DDT 
uh, was released as a silver bullet uh, to control any insect. And Paul Muller, who discovered the insecticidal principle of DDT, uh, he got the Nobel Prize. But within few years of huge application of DDT to control insects, uh, it has uh, uh, evident that uh, the DDT is not only controlling the ben uh, harmful insects, but also harming the environment. And it is persistent in the uh, you know, environment and uh, causing serious hazard to the other organisms. And perhaps you know the, uh, the name of Raquel Carson, one very famous uh, you know, writer uh, as well as environmentalist. Uh, she wrote a book called Silent Spring. And uh, she raised the boys that uh, DDT uh, uh, and organochlorinated pesticides are detrimental to the environment. Uh, first time she faced serious problem, but later society accepted her claim and DDT was gradually banned in almost every country. So uh, at that time, uh, uh, people uh, had an understanding that any new technology which is like a silver bullet can solve any problem very fast, may have some uh, hazardous consequence. So environmentalist or environmentalism emerged, uh, you know, at that time. Emergence of pressure group in the 60s uh, resulted in the first Earth Day in 1970. Uh, Raquel Carson uh, wrote, wrote her book in 1963, possibly. So 1970, the first art day was celebrated. That means we have only one common art. We have to, uh, you know, take care of each uh, and we can save the art from any other hazardous activities of human. The United Nations Conference on Human Environment and Development was held in 1972. Uh, so global, uh, you know, uh, consciousness developed uh, and the uh, Brundtland Report, Our Common Future, was published in 1987. These are the, you know, uh, underlined or uh, major uh, activities of human uh, uh, to save the earth. Uh, the most important one was the, uh, the Rio Earth uh, Summit, the Earth Summit in the Rio de Janeiro of Brazil uh, in 1992. And that Earth Summit, you know, uh, uh, invited all the policymakers, even government uh, officials or uh, leaders uh, in the Rio summit. And they had some consensus about uh, the possible consequences of new technologies uh, on earth. Uh, that means, you know, anthropogenic activity, human activities is a big threat uh, to the earth. Uh, deforestation and you know use of different technologies uh, uh, like fossil fuel burning resulted in global uh, climate change uh, and it is now very clear and uh, everyone underst uh, understood it. Uh, Convention on Biodiversity was uh, followed the Rio Earth Summit. That means we have to maintain the biodiversity in the earth. And the most remarkable one, Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. That means the uh, protocol has been developed uh, in 1993 and many countries uh, signed, including Bangladesh, to uh, protect the biodiversity. 
uh, in the earth. That means uh, the diversity in different organisms, even in the, uh, for example, rice, Bangladesh has uh, uh, had uh, hundreds of uh, different uh, local cultivars. We have to maintain and preserve those in the gene bank or some other way uh, uh, because they are the treasure box for future uh, development uh, uh, and science. So Convention of Biodiversity in 1992, let us uh, know a little bit more uh, because this is very interesting and important and associated with the biosafety guideline. Uh, it focuses uh, conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity. We cannot uh, use any, uh, you know, biological uh, uh, organism uh, uh, so that it replenish. We have to sust sustainably use it and maintain its, you know, uh, existence in the earth. Recognize uh, that convention, uh, the participants recognize the potential of modern biotechnology for human well-being. That means modern biotechnology is important as well as it is uh, uh, highly potential uh, for the human well-being. It is also recognized uh, in that convention to took uh, uh, cognizance that modern biotechnology could have serious effects on environment and health. So there was an assumption, modern biotechnology could have serious effects on environment and health because if you use the modern biotechnology uh, in a non-rational way uh, to make some uh, bioweapons or hazardous uh, organisms, you can do it. So you need some, some bad guys may use this technology for the, uh, you know, not for the human well-being, but for the uh, hazard to the human. So uh, uh, it is also understood. Article 8, there is a, you know, in the convention, there is a report. If you browse in the internet, you may find that report, Convention of Biological Diversity, CBD 1992. So in its article, 8G emphasized the need to regulate the risk associated with the issue use of LMOs. LMOs means living modified organisms. That means, uh, you know, for example, Bt brinjal is a living modified organism. A, a living organism, you modify uh, its gene or genome. Uh, Article 19.3 uh, set the stage for a legally binding international instrument about biosafety. That means that was the first decision by the, uh, uh, you know, world community to uh, make some international instrument about biosafety. And then the Cart Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety shape it. Uh, it entered into force on 29th December of 1993. Uh, it focuses on transboundary movement of the LMOs. Transboundary movement means movement from one country to another. If GMO uh, or LMO uh, moves from one country to an uh, another through a change of materials or ex uh, export import, then uh, it should maintain the biosafety guidelines, ensure the biosafety uh, of the new environment where it is uh, going to be uh, applied seeks to play lay down seeks to lay down an internationally uh, acceptable framework to provide an adequate level of protection against the possible adverse effects of lmos on biodiversity and human health so basic premises of uh, cpd uh, katagana protocol of biosafety uh, first is advance advance informed agreement between parties. And second is decision on the basis of scientific risk assessment. That means you have to uh, 
study the risk assessment of uh, the you know LMO or GMO before it release uh, to the environment and precautionary principle to follow precautionary principle possible precautionary principle so Cartagena protocol I suggest you to visit the Wikipedia you can find the detail or other uh, you know uh, pages uh, you can find it now the question is how is genetic engineering that is LMO's uh, developing technology uh, different from conventional breeding. Conventional breeding, you know, the, our, the age of our agriculture is around 12,000 years. And over the years of the process, uh, you know, uh, uh, our farmers, uh, uh, they uh, always choose the best, uh, you know, producing uh, lines or germ plasms for the next uh, cultivation. So uh, mass selection has been practiced for long and then conventional breeding gradually emerged uh, after the, uh, you know, uh, uh, proposal of uh, Gregor Johann Mendel uh, regarding his theory uh, of genetics. And gradually, you know, day by day, new technologies has emerged and uh, we, uh, our human being, uh, you know, discovered lots of insights, uh, molecular switches of uh, the growth and development and disease resistance of the plant. And later, uh, Norman Borlaug, uh, the pioneer of Green Revolution, father of Green Revolution, who received Nobel Prize in peace, uh, he made a real green revolution based on, you know, Mendelian genetics, as well as Darwin's uh, evolutionary theory and developed high yielding varieties, disease resistance varieties, as well as associated technologies. Uh, that means use of huge agricultural input like irrigation, agrochemicals for boosting the crop production. And last century, we uh, have witnessed the uh, impact of green revolution. We uh, have able to, uh, you know, feed millions of pep uh, people, billions of people and uh, eradicate famine from most of the part of the world. In our country, we had every year uh, famine and manga. Many people have died due to starvation of food, but our agriculture, due to the application of green uh, uh, revolution technologies in the practical field, Bangladesh is nearly uh, self-sufficient. But the big concern associated with those technologies is that uh, one is environmental degradation. Second one is very high cost uh, of production due to uh, use of huge inputs. So our government is targeting to make agriculture profitable and our new policies suggest like this way by the application of new technologies like biotechnology, genetic engineering, uh, nanotechnology or like that. So uh, biogenetic engineering now a uh, reality because, uh, for example, Bt brinjal, you cannot m make it by using conventional breeding. Uh, it contains gene from uh, a, a bacterium, uh, Bacillus thuringiensis, uh, and it introduced, it was introduced into the genome of brinjal. Uh, conventional breeding only, you know, you can do the crossing between uh, the compatible uh, plants, that means within the uh, same species, you cannot even do uh, within uh, the two families, uh, inter-family uh, breeding cannot be possible. This is why uh, the, uh, you know, genetic material available in different organisms uh, cannot be uh, used uh, uh, to make a new biotic and abiotic resistant 
or nutritionally enriched biofortified crops by using conventional breeding. But in genetic engineering, we can do, for example, golden rice, which contains vitamin A. And that vitamin A, uh, you know, uh, uh, was, uh, you know, uh, the gene synth uh, 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 which is responsible for synthesis of vitamin A was harvested from the daffodil as well as from maize. Maize and rice, you cannot do crossing, but uh, you can transfer gene very smartly from one organism to another. There is no restriction. This is why genetic engineering is superior than conventional breeding. Another limitation is that in case of conventional breeding, you need longer period of time, 10 to 15 years to release a variety. But genetic engineering or newly introduced gene editing technology within three to five years, you can do the job. So uh, they are different in many aspects. Combining DNA in new combinations and introducing uh, it into a new organism are the genetic engineering tools. In case of genetic engineering, you can transfer a defined and specific gene uh, to your target uh, you know, organism. Uh, but in case of conventional breeding, when you cross which gene is uh, you know, transferring from one to another, you cannot regulate. Uh, uh, um, even bad gene can be transferred, which you do not desire. And it, it, this is why not so smart and specific. Main differences between conventional breeding and genetic engineering are ability to move across sexual barriers. Sexual barriers, as I mentioned, bacterial gene can be transferred to the plant. Uh, there is no sexual relationship between bacteria and plant. But in case of conventional breeding, you must consider the compatibility of the crossing. Uh, amount of change, a specific gene embodying a particular trait or thousands of genes embodying desirable and undesirable genes you can uh, consider uh, for the genetic engineering. But in case of Conventional breeding, you have no control uh, which gene will be transferred from one organism to another organism. And occurrence of change in one or several generations, yes, uh, it is faster genetic engineering than the conventional breeding. So these are the, uh, some important points you have to understand. For example, plant breeding process, wild germplasm, domestic germplasm, in case of maize, uh, how uh, it is, you know, moving uh, elite germplasm, then you have to do selfing to get homozygous line, and finally you get the uh, commercial hybrid. It takes very long time. But in genetic engineering, uh, uh, what you can do, you can isolate and characterize a new gene uh, which uh, is responsible for a particular trait, and then you can uh, you know, transfer it by using recombinant DNA technology, which you uh, already know through your uh, introductory biotechnology and genetic engineering course in undergrad. Uh, that means define uh, a, a gene of interest uh, from any uh, organism. Even it can be synthesized. What you can do, you introduce it into the uh, plasmid and then, uh, you know, a plasmid you introduce into agrobacterium, tumefaciens bacterium, and bacterium, when you culture uh, with the plant cell, that bacterium have the, uh, you know, TI plasmid, uh, which help uh, to transfer the gene to the uh, plant genome. And by screening, you can get the, you know, new uh, organism, uh, Bt brinjal, uh, Bt cotton, Bt corn, and many uh, organisms have been developed by using recombinant DNA technology. But uh, we are uh, now, uh, uh, you know, experiencing more advanced smart technology called gene editing. And you enjoyed uh, the, uh, you know, uh, lecture from Andrew Roberts, what is gene editing and how does it work? 
and uh, amazing. You can uh, uh, do like Photoshop or, uh, you know, Microsoft Word file to edit it. Uh, so you can uh, knock out a gene, undesirable gene from the genome of any organism. You can introduce new gene. You can rearrange the DNA sequence uh, to make uh, uh, you know, a uh, desirable, uh, to get the desirable trait of the organism. And at a time, you can introduce lots of gene or you can into, into, uh, by multiplex gene editing or you can, uh, you know, knock out several genes to make uh, your desired organism. So gene editing is really an amazing technology and uh, the smartest technology used for gene editing is CRISPR-Cas9 technology or CRISPR-Cas technology. CRISPR clustered regularly uh, interspace short palindromic repeats uh, associate, uh, and uh, Cas means CRISPR associated protein or enzyme. So you can design a guide RNA and combine with the CRISPR Cas uh, and make a complex and construct. And then, uh, the, uh, depending on the sequence that you want to change, uh, you design the guard, guide RNA. So CRISPR construct, find the uh, you know specific target and then edit it. Very smart technology. In our case, in our laboratory, for the first time in Bangladesh, in collaboration with Sufyan Kamaun and Nick Talbot in UK, we edited uh, 10 uh, genes in the genome of wheat to get the blast resistant wheat variety. And we are now testing their resistance. Uh, we edited uh, or uh, knock out the uh, S genes, uh, disease susceptible uh, genes, which are negative re regulator of the disease. Uh, that means CRISPR-Cas technology is very smart and possibly you have seen uh, one book uh, I edited, uh, CRISPR-Cas methods, which is the first in this world. And our team is now currently working uh, to develop a software uh, for uh, CRISPR plant, that means uh, around 23,300 uh, 23, uh, uh, plant, uh, plants have been edited by CRISPR cast technology. We are trying to make a, uh, you know, get database so that people can use it worldwide. So CRISPR cast uh, technology, our team has been uh, highly linked and maybe you can see in high profile journal our publication uh, of the uh, uh, teamwork that we are doing. Is genetic engineering inherently unsafe? This is a big question. Many young students, even highly educated person, uh, university professors, some of them have uh, confusion about the genetic uh, safety of genetic engineering. Uh, here, two uh, diametrically opposite trends of thoughts are exist. Uh, US, US and Canada, no new risk associated with GM crops. Uh, they are, uh, if you go to Canada or USA, you can see lots of, you know, genetically engineered product in the field, even in the supermarket, you know, GM level uh, product are available. New regulations not considered necessary in US and Canada. Safety assessment, product rather than process. Yes, process is not important because in case of genetic engineering, you introduce a single gene or two genes or three genes or five genes, uh, which uh, compared to the whole genome, it is like one glass of water uh, uh, to an ocean. Uh, it has no, uh, you know, big impact to the uh, genome. But when you do conventional breeding, thousands and hundreds of genes are exchanged. So in that case, we are accepting mutation breeding or conventional breeding, but we are worried about very minor change of the uh, gene. Uh, this is not, you know, smart idea. So product rather than process based, uh, safety assessment uh, is uh, uh, being practiced. In comparison and contrast to other familiarity, 
and substantial equivalence to conventional crops. Uh, is genetic engineering inherently unsafe? If you ask uh, 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 about the EU stand, European Union, genetically engineered crops considered new and special. This is why they have strict rule uh, about the practical application, existing legislation not considered sufficient. Uh, and in EU, uh, uh, they are very restricted. But the BT corn they introduced to make the biofuel and not the food crop. Because in, in European Union, their population is decreasing. All the countries' population is decreasing. They have huge land resources. They are going back to the ancient organic agriculture. For them, it is okay. But uh, for the developing countries in Asia and Africa, where food security is a very big challenge. Uh, uh, our scenario is different. Our land is shrinking uh, as a result to grow more food. We need the smart technology. Uh, and European Union, they are developing the technology, doing the research, but applying to the other uh, Asian and African countries. Uh, safety assessment, uh, process-based in European Union, a uh, principle of substantial equivalence beginning rather than the end, adoption of precautionary principle as their guide. So European Union and US and Canada are completely different. A genetically engineered technology carries certain inherent unpredictability. Uh, it, uh, 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 this is why some uh, people uh, consider it unsafe. Some facts are isolation of a gene from its natural environment and integration into entirely different organism. Uh, there is a chance of horizontal gene transfer to other organism, but it has not yet been proved. Uh, and uh, even uh, the tech, uh, you know, insect or pest resistance can be developed and it is natural, you know, always uh, the pest, uh, they are always fighting against the uh, resistance, uh, natural resistance as well as genetically engineered resistance, uh, which is problematic for them to feed the herbs. Uh, so uh, it is possible. Possible transgenic instability due to triggering of the inbuilt defense mechanism of the host organism leading to inactivation or silencing of the foreign genes. Sometimes you introduce uh, a gene uh, to the genome of brinjal, for example. But if somehow host uh, organism silence that gene, remove the gene from the genome, then uh, there is instability. Uh, so uh, it uh, is to be considered. Uh, possibility of integration of foreign gene at a site uh, predisposed to silencing of gene, a uh, position effect may be happen. Variance in uh, levels of expression of the transgene in different environmental conditions. This is very uh, crucial. Uh, even in case of any variety, you know, environment uh, uh, is very important. Uh, a, a gene expression uh, uh, any organism can carry a gene, but it does not uh, uh, give you 100% guarantee that uh, it would sufficiently express uh, in any environment because environment has nearly 50% impact of the expression of the gene. Uh, so uh, heat, humidity, light, different environment uh, limit the expression of gene. If you are, uh, you know, uh, introduce gene is not expressed under certain condition, you would not get the benefit. And it can be happened in case of the, uh, you know, uh, cl uh, classical uh, uh, variety developed through the classical breeding. Uh, for example, some variety you can see very high yielding uh, in the uh, normal uh, pH, but when you move it to the saline soil, you can see they are not useful. That means it is due to the, uh, you know, uh, variation in the expression of the uh, uh, gene uh, uh, under varying condition. Possibilities of silencing of genes arising in subsequent generation. After four, fourth or fifth generation, uh, the introduced gene may be silenced. And case by case, 
sound scientific assessment is of utmost significance. So you have to test all the things before releasing a, a, a genetically engineered uh, product to the uh, any environment. And it is uh, very critical, not only genetically engineered, engineered any uh, you know improved variety, we have to do this uh, regional uh, uh, safety assessment or regional field trial. Biosafety issues in transgenic crops relate to environmental, human and animal health consequences and also microorganism, whether, whether they have any effect on microorganism. Both can have short and long-term implications. Biosafety risk involve the entire spectrum of biodiversity. A, a universal true for all approach may not be applicable. It is, uh, you have to consider case by case. Uh, so there is no universal true for all. So risk, uh, unknown probab probability, known probability and rigorous scientific assessment, risk mitigation and precautionary principle. These are uh, the strategies you have to follow before releasing a product uh, as a commercial one. Uh, biosafety issues in transgenic crops uh, 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 associated with some concern like horizontal gene transfer. Uh, you introduced a gene from the bacterium to a plant uh, 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 for the herbicide resistance, for example. If it, it moves to the uh, you know, herb, then herbicide would not work. Uh, uh, through horizontal gene transfer. Closely associated organisms may share gene from one to another. It is called horizontal gene transfer. For example, I told you, uh, human beings uh, are carrying human genome uh, uh, has uh, you know, nearly 33% of genes from the microorganisms which are uh, living in our body uh, and over the period of evolutionary process, we achieve the gene from those genome. So it is called horizontal gene transfer. Similarly, we then, uh, you know, uh, host plant, they uh, 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 live in close association and it is possible to have gene transfer from uh, wheat to host, but it takes very long time. For example, striga and sorghum plant, uh, it has been found that uh, a gene transfer taken place from uh, 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 sargam, uh, uh, striga to the sargam uh, genome. Uh, ge uh, genetic uh, contamination also can be uh, taken place. For example, if open pollinated crop, then du uh, during uh, insect pollination, uh, you know, uh, it may contaminate other uh, varieties available in the, uh, uh, during cross pollination. Transfer of allergens and toxins from one life form to another and creation of new toxins or allergen. Uh, so uh, when we do the uh, biosafety, we have to check it because due to the introduction of uh, new gene, new proteins will be synthesized if the, uh, that protein has uh, allergic principle uh, or uh, synthesize any toxin uh, that is harmful for the user then uh, it would be uh, uh, problematic, so you have to ensure it. So biosafety issues in transgenic crop, crops, main concerns are development of aggressive weeds, uh, wild relatives, I told you, through the horizontal gene transfer by transfer of transgenic traits. Uh, erosion of land races, wild relatives by genetic pollution uh, in centers of origin and diversity. So it may happen, uh, you know, wild relatives may be contaminated through cross pollination. Uh, and uh, harm to the non-target organisms, we don't know, uh, but we have to check it. Development of pest resistance by prolonged use of, uh, you know, uh, genetically engineered product. For example, uh, even you know, when we use pesticide for long time, pesticide resistance develops. Even uh, for example, uh, body, uh, uh, breathe on 28 and 29, you know, mega varieties uh, that uh, have been cultivated nearly 67% of our 
whole rice cultivated area. And recently, uh, it has been found that uh, they are uh, they, they uh, have become susceptible to blast fungus. That means even uh, they are traditionally being developed, uh, pest resistance can be developed. So, in case of genetic engineered uh, product, it can be happen. Moon, uh, and for example, BT technology, a single gene introduced BT technology in many countries, uh, they showed the, you know, uh, uh, pest resistance. Monoculture and limitation of, uh, uh, to farmers' choice in crop management. Uh, so biodiversity would be hampered. It is, you know, in modern agriculture, it is common in case of high yielding variety also. Hazard to human and animal health by transfer of toxins and allergens and by creation of new toxins and allergenic compounds. These are uh, the possible, you know, biosafety concern issues related to uh, transgenic crops. But if you consider uh, uh, the, those we released already all over the world, except pest resistance, most of them, uh, 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 most of the, uh, you know, concerns uh, you cannot see practically, but uh, they are possible. So assessment, how can you assess uh, genetically engineered venturing into an unknown biological territory? Uh, Lumar uh, conference, uh, which was held in 1975, uh, no research till safety guidelines in uh, uh, place. So uh, safety guidelines you must man maintain uh, during the research. Initially, focus on laboratory safety procedure and wider identification of biosafety with possibilities of commercialization of GM crop and the broad uh, a format of biosafety parameters essentially the same in all regulations. That means uh, first you have to check it in the laboratory, then in the confined trial, uh, in the field, uh, and then uh, you know analyzes the biochemicals, and finally you release the product. So biosafety issues in transgenic crops, there are two main stages. First, laboratory or greenhouse stage, and then confined trial so that it cannot contaminate uh, the environment. And important is prevention of the spread of genetically engineered material outside the lab or field. Uh, laboratory or greenhouse stage, different biosafety levels as per the degree of risk involved. Uh, depending on the technology, two methods of containment, physical containment and biological con containment you have to maintain. So for genetic engineering, usually we use biosafety level uh, uh, cabinet uh, for doing the job and a separate room uh, so that it cannot escape from the laboratory to the environment. Confined uh, field trial, a confined trial is a small scale release of a transgenic plant. For example, BT cotton is now under confined trial in Bangladesh. Uh, 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 so release of a transgenic plant species for research purposes conducted under conditions that prevent spread of the organism and mitigate its impact on the surrounding environment. Objective is, to collect data to evaluate the crop's performance. Uh, agronomic performance is very important because you may introduce a gene if it is not expressed in certain environment where you are going to release, uh, it is meaningless. So focus on risk mitigation, risk mitigation, uh, the terms and conditions that are necessary to conduct the trial safety, prevent gene flow, prevent entry of GMOs into food chain, prevent persistence of GMO in the field during the, you know, your study. So biopharmaceutical th therapeutics, for example, lots of, you know, pharmaceutical therapeutics are uh, genetically engineered. For example, all the, you know, insulin uh, produced all over the world, they are genetically engineered because human uh, uh, cannot donate insulin to the uh, other diabetic patient. Uh, so biosafety risk, uh, survival, multiplication, dissemination of GMOs in contained and open environment, interaction of GMOs with biological system, rules of dissemination, physical, biological. These are the risk factor we have to consider during the biosafety study. Risk depends upon the nature of organism involved, uh, extent of use of LMOs and end products of LMOs 
uh, or not. So biopharmaceutical therapeutics risk uh, categorized of microorganisms determining factors capable to cause disease. Uh, the product, if it causes disease, then it is problematic. Hazards to laboratory workers, risk to spread to community, availability of effective treatment. These are very uh, important for releasing any microorganism uh, uh, as you know, uh, pharmaceutical tool. Uh, health risk, toxigenicity, allergenicity, pathogenicity, antibiotic resistance, and so on. Biopharmaceutical uh, 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 therapeutics, uh, some more information is environmental risk, outcrossing between GMO and the pathogen, negative effects on population of non-target organism, uh, and we have to assess the risk of excess expression and damage by the uh, uh, natural system by the introduced organism. Risk management and communication, physical and biological uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 approaches and strategies you have to mention. Uh, GM foods need for safety assessment uh, for in case of GM food, expressed protein genetically, generally not a part of regular food supply. This is why you have to check whether uh, the gene product is uh, somehow harmful or allergic uh, to the human or not. Uh, food complex mixture like nutrients, anti-nutrients and natural toxins because when a new gene is introduced, nutrient content, anti-nutrient content and natural toxin production may be changed directly enter into human system. Uh, this is why we have to be careful. Assume different forms involve storage, processing and transportation system. Uh, guidelines for codex. Uh, uh, elementary as commission uh, uh, assessment of possible allergenicity, assessment of possible toxicity, compositional analysis of key components, food processing, nutritional modification. So if nutritional modification, uh, other composition dramatically change and if it is associated with the nutrition of the uh, consumer, uh, even animals or human, uh, we have to be uh, careful. Uh, GM foods, allergenicity and toxicity. Uh, uh, this is an important issue. Uh, it is a, a hyper allergen, uh, allergy. Allergy is a hypersensitive reaction initiated by immunologic mechanism caused by specific substance called allergen. Allergens are basically protein. Uh, so uh, assessment is the gene source allergenic expression level uh, of introduced gene uh, unintended effect or digestibility, heat stability, all the things you have to check. Toxicity, new proteins as a result of intended uh, modification, unintended new protein as a result of the modification, natural constituents beyond their level of normal variation. So you have to do thorough uh, biochemical analysis of the product. So uh, intended and unintended changes in nutrient levels, uh, um, this is very uh, important. Uh, bioavailability of the nutrients, the nutrients may be present, but bioavailability means how much nutrient is absorbed by the uh, you know, consumer or human. Stability and processing. Uh, when you do the processing, for example, golden rice, if vitamin A is lost during cooking, uh, then it is meaningless. Uh, presence uh, and effect of anti-nutrients, uh, some compounds if produced, which is anti-nutrient and harmful for the uh, you know, consumer, then uh, it would be problematic. You have to assess this impact of individual changes on overall nutritional profile. So unintended effects, uh, random integration of transgenes, uh, insertion, mutagenesis, disruption of, uh, you are uh, targeting to change a certain gene. But if it unintended changes is taken place during genetic engineering, you have to uh, confirm it by using laboratory PCR and other techniques doing the sequences uh, so that uh, you can ensure that uh, uh, disruption of, uh, no disruption of gene function and product, no product of new proteins and phenotype, enzyme, genotype, toxin, molecular metabolites are not changed in the uh, target organism, except your desired one. So biosafety is integral to modern biotechnology. It is now, uh, I can conclude that, uh, the adoption of modern biotech products needs to be balanced with adequate biosafety safeguards. 
case by case scientific risk assessment and cost benefit analysis can be done because if a, a genetically engineered product carries some you know valuable trait but if it is not cost effective it, if it is not profitable uh, farmers will not uh, or consumer or stakeholders will not accept it greater acceptance of health care applications need based adoption in gm crops and foods participation of various stakeholders dissemination of knowledge and information these are very essential because you have to communicate to the society all the knowledge what you changed and all the informations otherwise uh, you know uh, society may not accept it as well as all the stakeholders businessmen producer you have to engage them so that they can understand the value of your product and do not uh, unnecessarily fear on it so thank you very much and uh, this is all about you know today's lecture and uh, now uh, 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 the floor is open uh, for your question uh, and I shall, uh, or comments, I shall try to answer your question because this is, uh, I moved a little bit faster because you have already enjoyed a fantastic lecture from Dr. Oppon Islam uh, during biosafety uh, training program. But, and most of the topics are, I guess, uh, uh, more or less familiar to you. Uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, this is a nice document uh, and lecture uh, uh, which offers offered you uh, a, a broad outline of uh, biosafety uh, for genetically engineered or modern biotechnology. Uh, thank you from my side for listening uh, this long lecture. Now, uh, please ask a question or make any I expect everyone will be participating. Assalamualaikum, sir. Waalaikum salam, Abdullah Rahat. Sir Jahid. Sir Jahid. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir, uh, sir uh, in common, conventional breeding, we know that uh, a, plus, a, a gene from a plant to plant is transferred to selective breeding. So, if we do that in a laboratory uh, by transferring the same gene, uh, by laboratory method, would the uh, safety assessment of the end product be same for both cases? Uh, if I uh, correctly uh, uh, listen to your question, uh, you mean that in case of transgenic product, uh, uh, should we maintain the safety in the laboratory, right? No, sir. sir. My question is, uh, in conventional breeding, Sir, we use selective uh, reproduction method to transfer a gene from uh, from one plant to another. Uh, but if we do it in laboratory, uh, just to uh, transfer the gene from the same plant to the uh, another plant, would the end product have the same safety safety assess, assessment ah, of the conversion? Good, good, good question. Uh, that means if we uh, get the gene from rice and introduce to another rice variety, uh, whether same safety assessment is followed or not. Uh, this is a very good question. It is called cisgenic. Uh, that means uh, like a classical breeding. Uh, but if you uh, uh, use the, uh, you know, recombinant DNA technology, uh, current uh, rules, you know, uh, suggest us to follow the biosafety guideline. But obviously there, is, uh, there should not be any risk uh, to transfer a gene from rice to rice, same species. For example, in case of golden rice, first time scientists used a gene from daffodil, uh, the vitamin A biosynthesizing gene and introduced into rice. Uh, uh, but uh, there was a big question because uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, not, uh, it was a transgenic because gene from a different family of plant, although a uh, plant uh, uh, in, uh, in the same kingdom planted. But uh, if, uh, you know, uh, uh, then scientists decided to get the same gene from the corn, corn and uh, uh, rice, they are closely related under the same family. Uh, gramini uh, to uh, you know uh, 
uh, to uh, satisfy the uh, environmentalist. Actually, if you get the gene from uh, uh, daffodil, uh, vitamin A biosynthesizing gene, and if you get it from the maize, uh, as a researcher, uh, it is meaningless. <laughs> same thing because uh, gene is same. For example, if you get vitamin C from amloki uh, and vitamin C from uh, you know uh, green chili, vitamin C actually chemical composition is same, or even from the tablet, a uh, same effect you will uh, get. And you, uh, if you have deficiency, you can uh, uh, you know. Uh, 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 if you uh, get it and you can remove the deficiency uh, problem. So uh, scientifically, uh, the gene from any source is not uh, problematic, but for uh, the environmentalist or policymakers who, uh, uh, has, uh, uh, who have very poor knowledge about the science, this, uh, the state of the art of science, uh, in case of rise to rise, uh, uh, gene transfer uh, would be, you know, uh, for them more acceptable. But as a biotechnologist, actually no meaning because if gene sequence is same, uh, same nucleotide number, uh, whatever the source is no problem. If you even uh, synthesize that gene in the laboratory by uh, synthetic biology or system biology, uh, it would behave uh, uh, similarly. Uh, but uh, uh, you are right, uh, this cisgenic case, uh, sensitivity of the society is very uh, less. And in that case, they may ask another question, uh, uh, the environmentalist, why you did not go for, you know, a classical uh, crossing to transfer the gene? Uh, it would be another big problem to stop you. Uh, but anyway, uh, cisgenic uh, in modern uh, uh, biotechnology, cisgenic uh, one, uh, is easy to convince the policymaker as well as the environmentalist. Thank you. Sir, uh, I have a question. Uh, Rahat. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, blast, uh, wheat blast is a severe disease in Bangladesh now. And we know uh, the genes that uh, infer resistant to some varieties. So why don't we use genetic engineering to transfer uh, genes like RMG8 and RMG9 to our conventional uh, uh, varieties to produce uh, the blast resistant variety? Uh, thank you, Rahat, for uh, your uh, good question. Actually, wheat blast uh, is really a fearsome disease. Uh, it uh, uh, was uh, a first uh, seen in Bangladesh in 2016 uh, uh, in eight districts, 15,000 hectares of wheat was destroyed by that new fungal disease. And our agriculturist and government was puzzled and they decided to burn the whole crop. And at that time, I took the uh, challenge to, uh, you know, determine the genetic identity of the uh, fungus by, uh, by using field pathogenomics. And interestingly, at that time, we had no project. We engaged global scientific community, uh, all the big guys, uh, you know, uh, Royal Society's fellows uh, from uh, UK, uh, Switzerland, uh, Germany, France, uh, and many countries, you know, Australia. And uh, we uh, uh, confirmed that these pathogens somehow introduced from South America, uh, possibly through the uh, wheat trading. Uh, and it was a, a big discovery about, uh, using a, a latest technology in the uh, uh, field pathogenomics, new technology in the field of a developing country. Uh, and uh, we published the paper in uh, BMC Biology and it was a big story in uh, nature and science. They published the news uh, to support us. Anyway, uh, uh, after that, we thought that how can we develop a blast resistant variety? You know, this disease has been in South American countries like Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, and Paraguay since uh, 1985. But till now, no uh, reliable resistant variety uh, have uh, been developed. Uh, why? Because wheat, wheat is a hexaploid. Uh, 
a rice is diploid. In case of hexaploid, you know, every gene has six copies and difficult to do genetic engineering. In case of wheat, you cannot find a GM wheat in the uh, earth, although it is a very important food crop in the world. So uh, genetic engineering uh, uh, to introduce new gene into the wheat genome uh, by recombinant DNA technology is very difficult. And you mentioned that RMG8 and RMGGR119, two genes have been uh, characterized uh, by a Japanese scientist, Yukio Tosha, I visited his lab at Kobe University and we got the germplasm uh, from him. And both germplasm uh, are winter wheat you know, you cannot cultivate uh, normally. Even uh, first year, we got uh, no flower. But anyway, after proper uh, banalization in 35 days, last year, uh, not last year, uh, this year, uh, 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 you know, uh, Muaz, Mujahid, uh, he uh, 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 tried to cross uh, between our two varieties. One is a barigom 26, another barigom 33. Barigom 33 is moderately tolerant to wheat blast. So uh, our intention is to uh, transfer gene by using classical breeding. And we have the marker, so we can use marker assisted selection breeding. So he got uh, uh, a good number of seeds uh, 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 through uh, crossing. Uh, hopefully next year we can see whether gene resistant gene is transferred to the uh, our local uh, variety or not. And if it happens, maybe some bad things would also transfer and we need uh, several years to clean all the things and get the blast resistant variety. So this uh, classical uh, as well as semi, uh, you know, advanced technology marker assisted uh, selection breeding project uh, is, uh, is now continuing in our laboratory. But if you uh, ask me why do you do not go for genetic engineering by using recombinant DNA technology, it is not so easy. And in case of wheat, wheat is considered an abandoned crop for GM. Uh, you, you can find a research article published by my friend, uh, you know, Ulf Brande from John Innes Center recently. Uh, uh, that why wheat is very complicated for uh, genetic engineering. But new gene editing technology, Chris Parkas, uh, uh, we did some uh, uh, project work uh, funded by British Biotechnology Research Council, and we are able to uh, edit uh, uh, 10 genes, but unfortunately, the edited gene, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, transplant, uh, you know, transformed plants didn't show uh, enough resistance in the laboratory, moderate resistance. This is why uh, we are a little bit upset, but concept is proved. So uh, transgenic, uh, uh, genetic, uh, uh, gene editing technology may be a future way uh, to rapidly get the, uh, uh, you know, blast resistant variety, but we are doing several approach. One is gene editing, another one is marker-based selection breeding, and third one we are using uh, the mutation breeding, uh, nuclear technology. Uh, and we fortunately got some plants uh, which are immune to wheat dust, but uh, after mutation, but uh, we have to check their agronomic performances as well as to do the whole genome sequencing uh, to see you know, why they are resistant to wheat blast. And that would be an interesting area for further research. And if we are lucky enough, uh, if the agronomic performances remain as the commercial cultivar, uh, that, that means parent of the mutants, uh, we can release variety very quickly. But anyway, we are very serious and fighting furiously against the wheat blast. And very soon you may see in the newspaper a big news uh, that we discovered, uh, uh, we discovered a new technology uh, for detection of wheat blast like a pregnancy strip. Uh, and, uh, uh, and the paper has already been published uh, in uh, 
uh, you know, uh, engineering journal 6.47 impact factor. And we are now making the press release and you can see in the uh, newspaper, I am sure. Uh, and that technique uh, would be a revolution in biotechnology because in wheat export import in the, uh, you know, port, uh, 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 the quarantine, uh, they can use that strip like a pregnancy strip and our farmers can use it and monitor the wheat grass uh, in the alternate host as well as asymptomatic plant. As a result, use fungicide application can be reduced by using that technology. And we did this job uh, in collaboration with Chinese Academy of Science, Ohio State University and USDA uh, scientist. Uh, so uh, I am not yet disclosed that paper uh, through Facebook, maybe within a week, you can see it because if I re uh, release it through the Facebook group, uh, newspaper would not publish the uh, you know, news. Uh, okay, thank you. A good question. Thank you, sir. Sir, I have another question. Sir. Yes. Sir, uh, can uh, gene transfer uh, to an organism uh, suppress the uh, gene expression of that organism other genes like uh, it is a good question when uh, you know uh, when you uh, knock out a gene by using gene editing or introduce a gene uh, into the uh, genome of an organism there is a risk of there is a risk of uh, you know interaction uh, between the protein product of your gene, introduced gene, uh, with uh, other proteins produced uh, by the genes pre uh, present, uh, by the expression of the genes present in the uh, organism. Or, uh, 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 you know, uh, after introduction of a new gene, uh, expression of other gene may be affected. It is called pleiotrophic effect. Uh, this is why we need to evaluate the performance, agronomic performance, as well as uh, the, you know, genetic performance. Uh, that means the gene which you introduce to whether it is expressed enough or not to make enough protein to, uh, you know, show the uh, product or effect. Uh, so lots of things uh, uh, you have to do. So genetic engineering, just to introduce a gene and you do not uh, guarantee uh, you uh, cannot give a guarantee that uh, the product would be exactly like that. So there, uh, in biology, uh, there are lots of uh, interactions among the genes as well as among the gene products that these proteins are taking place uh, at cellular level, uh, uh, which ultimately, uh, uh, you know, uh, regulate the phenotype. So you have to check it uh, uh, thoroughly uh, uh, and then, uh, all uh, uh, testing if you find satisfactory and if it is commercially profitable uh, and nutritionally as well as other aspect it is acceptable then only then you can release it thank you sir. a very good question sir assalamu alaikum jinan sir uh, jinan please Sir, I have some questions. Uh, so my first question is in environmental risk factor slide, we have seen that the outcrossing between the GMO and um, uh, pathogens can be occurred. Sir, is, uh, if it is possible that there will be some positive outcomes or results from that, or it is only possible to give some negative outcomes. So sir, how can it be positive or negative? I mean, what is what are the outcomes can be? Uh, you mentioned uh, the outcrossing between pathogen and uh, the uh, GM. Uh, pathogen actually not outcrossing. Actually, uh, pathogen uh, uh, interact with the uh, 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 GM plant, and uh, pathogen is different, you know, species. Uh, there is no chance to ex uh, transfer of gene. But outcrossing, for example, brinjal, uh, BT brinjal, uh, if it is a cross pollinated crop, then pollen from the Bt brinjal to the uh, normal brinjal uh, can be taken place. 
uh, even normal brinjal can become a Bt brinjal. So contamination chance is higher. Uh, and it can be you know, positive or it can be negative. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we cannot uh, give a guarantee. Uh, but in case of, uh, for example, uh, potato. Uh, potato as uh, uh, rarely flower, and potato is actually, uh, 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 how to say, multiply by using the tuber that is vegetatively propagated crop. In that case, uh, uh, the chance of, you know, uh, outcrossing with the uh, relative, uh, uh, related plants, you know, compatible plants are chances low. But there is a, a chance, you know, whole world diversity of the uh, organisms, how we can see those diversity. Uh, it is due to the uh, cross, natural crossing. Nature, nature is always doing the, uh, you know, uh, genetic engineering of its own way. Uh, and this is why we can see huge diversity. For example, or I just said, uh, uh, around 8,000 uh, different uh, 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 germ plasms are available in our uh, Bangladesh Rice Research Institute's gene bank. Uh, how it happened? It happened uh, uh, through you know, natural uh, genetic engineering. And there are lots of uh, GM also uh, uh, available uh, in the earth, GM crop, uh, which, uh, uh, you know, genetically engineered by the nature. For example, I told you, uh, 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 sorghum and striga, uh, they exchange the gene, although they are different species. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, but uh, through a parasitic interaction, gene transfer taken place. Agrobacterium, tumor patients like bacterium, lots of bacterium, they are doing the genetic engineering uh, in the nature. Uh, and we are now using uh, that tool in the laboratory. Uh, even in our uh, intestine, you know, some bad guys like pyricolary, uh, 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 helicobacter pylori, one of the uh, bacterium, uh, human deadly pathogenic bacterium, colonize in our intestinal layer, and it can cause the mutation in our genome, uh, which may result cancer. Uh, so uh, this is genetic engineering and naturally been taken place. And, uh, uh, and uh, it may uh, be harmful, for example, cancer, uh, 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 is deadly disease for the human. So that uh, uh, natural gene transfer, horizontal genes, gene transfer from uh, uh, pyricularia or IG to human is problematic for us. So uh, positive, negative, both can be uh, happen. Thank you for the question. Thank you, sir. Sir, I have another question. I really don't know, sir, is it relatable to uh, this uh, topic or not? But, sir, I have uh, it in my mind for uh, from past few days. That, sir, human uh, cloning or cloned human production, if it is possible in this current world, I have uh, went, I have uh, gone through an article uh, um, past a few days and I uh, read that an American scientist uh, have uh, experimented uh, with that uh, topic, but uh, the, the government has forcefully um, uh, stopped him uh, from doing that. But sir, why? If it is not beneficial, yeah, this is a very important question. Uh, ethical uh, issue is here. In case of human, uh, uh, you know, scientists uh, have the technology uh, to change any gene uh, now by using gene editing. Uh, perhaps you have seen a big debate uh, among the scientists as well as the policymakers because a um, uh, couple of years ago, last year, uh, a Chinese scientist he edited uh, the germline of uh, 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 human uh, and then after fertilization put into the uh, human uh, uh, uterus and uh, uh, finally a, a twin baby was born uh, who are free from uh, uh, the uh, gene responsible for uh, susceptibility to the AIDS virus. So actually the parents are AIDS patient. They desire to have baby free from uh, AIDS, but it, uh, practically it is impossible because uh, uh, AIDS uh, acquired uh, immune deficiency syndrome virus uh, transmit, uh, inherit from the parents to the offspring. So 
uh, John Cui, the scientist, he uh, did uh, used the CRISPR-Cas gene editing technology, and two babies are free from uh, the risk of uh, AIDS. Uh, but it was a serious debate worldwide uh, because, uh, uh, and uh, uh, he was uh, put into the jail. Uh, uh, in every country, uh, there are some uh, strict ethical guidelines you uh, are not allowed to uh, uh, change, uh, uh, intentionally change any gene of human. Uh, because uh, if you want to do it, uh, you know, uh, lots of human gene have been uh, characterized and cloned in different organisms. Uh, so if you change uh, the human, then you can make the synthetic human. Uh, uh, and transfer all the gene, for example, Usain Bolt's gene or Einstein's uh, uh, gene from Einstein <laughs> or uh, something else, or you can make aggressive uh, human uh, for the soldier or like that. So uh, genetic engineering uh, technology is not yet enough mature uh, to apply it directly to the a human, but for uh, using, uh, you know, uh, 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 treating the cancer cell, you can target the uh, cancer cell by using, uh, you can do a cancer patient, for example, seriously uh, ill uh, patient, if you can use genome editing in the uh, patient, it is acceptable in US uh, and already been uh, uh, successful in some uh, cases. So you, uh, you can uh, uh, correct the uh, gene mutated uh, that resulted the phenotype of cancer or in case of diabetes. So uh, some limited, uh, uh, you know, application uh, in human has been started, but dramatically uh, if uh, it is being used uh, in human, then the new Frankenstein can be made by some, uh, you know, bad policymakers or society, uh, and even can make lots of, uh, you know, uh, like Dolly cloning, lots of a human clone, and it would be a big problem. Uh, uh, and ethically, uh, scientists are not yet accepted at it. But uh, you will see uh, uh, this type of regulation and ethical concern uh, would gradually be eroded once we would be more precise, more powerful with our technology. Our technology is still uh, at infant stage, uh, genetic engineering or gene editing, because gene editing technology uh, have been uh, 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 discovered, uh, was discovered in 2012 by Jennifer and Emmanuel. Uh, and uh, it has been used in every organisms, including human successfully. But uh, its implications, uh, practical products are still limited. Uh, uh, so we have to do lots of study to understand uh, the gene and gene interaction, protein-protein interactions, and lots of other biological complex phenomena uh, and consequences after, uh, uh, you know, dealing with genetic engineering. Then uh, in future, maybe gradually, uh, 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 lots of, you know, opportunity uh, will uh, bring by the, uh, you know, new technology. Maybe we can have uh, more advanced technology than the CRISPR Cas. CRISPR Cas, we uh, are thinking now a revolutionary technology because it is very easy. Uh, and we are thinking that it would make uh, a new uh, a biology, bio editing uh, 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 through the application of bio editing. And uh, one day you will see the guys who discovered the CRISPR Cas method, they will get Nobel Prize. And in plant, for the first time, CRISPR Cas technology in the world in 2013 uh, was used by Sufyan Kamon, who is my good friend and uh, our Nuruddin Mahmood worked uh, with him for, uh, you know, uh, four months. So uh, we are connected to that uh, state of the art technology. Thank you for a nice question. Thank you so much, sir. Any more question? Fatima and- Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, Sumaya? Yes, sir. So I have a question, uh, sir. 
uh, through the blessings of modern biotechnology, we are producing a uh, lots of uh, GMOs. Uh, but sir, uh, my question is, what is the uh, impact uh, of a, lo a good number of GMOs on our ecosystem? Yes, impact of genetic engineering uh, in uh, for the uh, 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 you know benefit of human uh, is robust and it is expanding uh, very fast. For example, the biggest impact is uh, the commercial production of insulin. Uh, insulin, you know, millions, even billions of people, diabetic uh, uh, patient, they are using the insulin. Uh, without genetic engineering, you could not make, there is no alternate way uh, to make the insulin because insulin is synthesized uh, in the uh, human uh, pancreas uh, in the cell of, beta cell of uh, islets of uh, Langerhans and you cannot donate it like uh, blood. So uh, it is, uh, I think, uh, uh, one of the, uh, how to say, uh, application and another uh, uh, big applications. There are some other big applications uh, we can see uh, in case of corn, uh, corn industry, uh, BT uh, cotton, cotton industry. You know, hugely been benefited. Uh, uh, for example, in India, uh, Indian uh, cotton industry. Uh, you know, uh, they uh, 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 increase their productivity uh, more than. Uh, you know, uh, uh, threefold by the application of uh, GM technology. And the quality as uh, there is no cotton ball worm in, uh, infestation, and the quality of cotton is dramatically increased. So uh, these are uh, some of the uh, examples. There are uh, lots of, you know, in case of uh, uh, flower, ornamental uh, uh, plants, uh, uh, you, uh, you know, big industry is exposed. You can make any color of plant. For example, if you have a black colored uh, tuberose or pink colored tuberose or, you know, a red pink mixed uh, tuberose or blue colored tuberose uh, or uh, rose, uh, that would be very nice. And scientists are making uh, by changing the anthocyanin biosynthetic uh, gene. And uh, they are, <coughs> practically been used. Billions of dollars, uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, you know, uh, they are now, you know, uh, genetically engineered, not only insulin, lots of, you know, life-saving drugs. So uh, in agriculture, uh, it is becoming uh, very powerful. Uh, in USA, disease resistant, pest resistant, uh, crop varieties, US is open for, uh, uh, you know, GM crop. Canada is also open for uh, Argentina, Brazil, uh, and many other countries. Cotton, uh, uh, you know, uh, in many countries now, cotton, even Australia, uh, India, uh, uh, Pakistan, and many countries, cotton, uh, China, uh, cotton uh, and corn uh, are, uh, have been uh, cultivated. In Europe, uh, they introduced, you know, GM corn. Uh, uh, for making the biofuel as well, uh, as, well as other uh, products. So it is an emerging area, uh, genetic engineering, practical uh, market. If you see, you can visit ISA website. You can uh, get the real how many trillion dollar uh, business worldwide. And, uh, you know, genetically engineered microorganisms are now using for making new drug uh, antibiotics uh, and uh, uh, lots of new opportunities uh, or, uh, you know, uh, remediation of the environment. Uh, so uh, biotechnology is still uh, at infant stage. I am, uh, you know, foreseeing that it would be a mainstream uh, in all technology. So in this century, you will uh, hopefully survive much more longer than me. You can see lots of stunning things uh, in this art. Uh, when, uh, you know, hybrid technology uh, was introduced in agriculture, there were lots of debate. Uh, even in Bangladesh, there were huge campaign movement. It is not good, but you, you see now all the vegetables, most of the crops in Bangladesh, they are hybrid, but hybrid has a certain limit of vigor. So we want to overcome uh, that limit and uh, to introduce the 
genetic engineering and it is the uh, uh, you know technology of the future uh, as well as the present thank you sumaya nice question thank you sir fatima yes sir are you listening me yes sir okay are you enjoying the talk yes sir yes sir okay uh, do you have any question Sir, actually, I have a question, but uh, um, uh, is it the ending of the class, sir? Yes, sir, is... Uh, uh, this is the last question. Uh, you can ask the question, and then I shall stop uh, uh, the uh, end the class. Oh, okay, sir. Sir, actually, uh, uh, I'm thinking about. Uh, uh, on the way of uh, uh, sorry the vision of uh, uh, on the producing uh, this type of human uh, or uh, here is some political uh, concerns like uh, sir uh, i don't think that uh, uh, some advanced uh, leading countries in technology they are uh, not doing this uh, so what is about uh, uh this concern sir yeah you know uh, uh the uh, any technology and any uh, 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 aspect if we consider we have to uh, con uh, consider the time uh, we have to consider the situation environment uh, we cannot consider now transgenic human uh, because it, it would badly be used by you know uh, uh, many other uh, uh, countries to make soldiers or like that and it would be a uh, terrible and uh, create a new chaos you know uh, in this art there are enough resources to feed and satisfy all the people but due to geopolitics even you know a covid 19 uh, vaccine uh, lots of geopolitics and industrial uh, war is going on so uh, if you uh, offer them uh, the politician, th uh, those uh, uh, power uh, in power gaming, uh, 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 then uh, for making a new human, uh, it would be terrible, uh, and it is highly risky. At present, we can we have this understanding. In future, what would be happen? Future human may think differently, and uh, uh, ethical guidelines and other things may be stronger in future, and regulatory system uh, would be more you know, uh, transparent. Nowadays, you know, transparency is a big problem. Uh, and uh, power game is the, uh, still a real issue. So at this stage, we, uh, 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 you know, a global uh, consensus uh, about the scientist is that not to, uh, you know, use any new trait into the human to make more powerful like, uh, you know, BT Brinjal or like that. <laughs> we can, we are not uh, allowed to do that. But uh, uh, we don't know what would happen. Even some people may uh, in an unauthorized way can apply it. Anyway, thank you uh, 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 all of you for listening uh, uh, the talk and enjoying uh, uh, the talk. And uh, I wish all of you all the best and have a, a, a safe, uh, 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 stay safe and healthy stay in the uh, amid of uh, coronavirus. Um, uh, thank you once again and see you next uh, in next lecture. Thank you, sir. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam.